Okay, here we are on a beautiful sunny day in Larchmont, New York. We're previewing Clark's Christmas holiday sale. Before I move on, let me wish everyone a very happy Christmas, happy holiday. Thank you for a great year last year. And we're going to start off with this big 1976 Monte Carlo. It's a beast. It's, I would call it the pimp mobile of the century. It was done, in, it was a kit to make it look like a Rolls Royce custom cloud. This car is in great shape. It has only 900 miles on it. Came out of Roslyn, Long Island. It starts up, no problem. Whoever buys it, they should clean it up and take care of it. They have a look at the pipes and stuff because it's been sitting for 40 years in the garage. I love this car. All the girls at the gallery want me to put Clark Auction on the side of it and drive it around with a big, change my hat to a big furry hat. Anyway, without further ado, here we have a 1968 we're getting into the automobile and bike business. This is a vintage BSA Lightning. Mint, mint condition. We have not started. We don't have the key. We have the title. This was also in a garage for a long time. The tank smells, the gas smells, which so it needs work. But we are selling it as is, a 1015 estimate. Looks like it was straight out of the box. Okay, moving into the main room. We have a great, great sale this time. We're going to start here as we're moving in. We have a pair of these wonderful Sheraton style satin wood and mahogany commodes they're by henkel harris there's a pair of them estimated eight to twelve hundred i believe back in the furniture vein we won't be doing a lot of furniture next year because we redid our gallery and we're going to be going for more jewelry art and the groovy items anyway we have this wonderful french burlwood sideboard mirrored front marble top wonderful inlay great patina on the burl walnut atop that we have this clock this is a rare rare clock it's a chelsea I believe it's from Pittsburgh by Hardy, a company called Hardy in Pittsburgh. Nice bronze top, came in a walk-in Wednesday. Next to it, we have a wonderful Tiffany lamp. This was actually in a prior sale, and believe it or not, the person who purchased it here passed away and his executors have asked us to sell it again. So it's here again. Okay, moving right over here. This also came from where the car and Rosling came from. It's a wonderful sculpted metal. Paul Evans cabinet, one of two we have in the sale. Nice big size. Two finished drawers inside. The top is finished also. Nice rare cabinet, nice big size. I believe this is estimated 10 to 15,000. Over here, we have the other unit that was mounted on the wall down there. This one, I believe, has three doors. I don't want to pull it apart. Yeah, three folding doors. Inside it has finished drawers. Slate top. This one also, I believe, is estimated 10 to 15. We have it sitting on the dolly because the wall, you know. And then here we have the highlight of the sale. This absolutely wonderful lamp came from a woman in New Rochelle. Ten years ago, she sold a hanger through us and she was so happy at the price. She said, when I get ready to sell my Tiffany lamp, I'm going to sell it through you guys. So lo and behold, about five weeks ago, she walked in the door and we were very happy to see her. So the story is her a relative worked at Tiffany there was two of these lamps made. Supposedly they were custom made and not paid for. They were ordered destroyed. One of them survived, which is this one, which I believe her relative works for Tiffany brought home. It's a uh, mosaic, jeweled bronze base. Wonderful, look at the size of it. It weighs a ton. On top of it, we have a shade which are actually selling separately. Came from the same place, but we believe that after the shade was destroyed, he put it together. So it's not we did. We found this one in the book. It's in the Tiffany book by Alistair Duncan. It's the actual lamp that's in the book, the shade. So we're selling the shade separately for that reason. And we're going to sell the hangers separately. Look at the wonderful colors in these hangers. So it'd be exciting to see what this does. The base is estimated 80 to 120,000. Probably one of the rarest bases ever to come on the market. These are estimated 1,000 to 15 each and the shade is you know, it's estimate where, where it'll land. It's, we have it estimated 20 to 30,000, but it will do what it does. We have a lot of nice rugs in this sale. In this room, you'll see two Chinese ones, large open field one there, and a sort of a, I would call this an Art Deco nickel style little area carpet here. And moving in here, we have spent the last week redoing. We leveled the floors, we put base down, and now we put solid oak floors, so we're getting we're going up-tempo for our 20th anniversary. Next year will be our 20th year in the auction business in large one, so we're going to up the ante and we're going to uh, go for it. 
And that's the easiest way to do it. So moving along this cell, we have lots of wonderful cut crystal from a 57th Street estate in the city. Absolutely wonderful, great for the holiday season. We cut crystal vases, we got Mizen, we have Lalique, we have Art Glass, we have some Scrimshaw, nice holiday gifts. Look at this wonderful large etched glass vanity box. We have bronzes, porcelain plates. We have some wonderful Chinese items in the sale. I've noticed this pair of large enamel decorated vases, absolutely wonderfully decorated. We have Bjorn Windblad. We have bronze mounted duck form candelabra. We have a lot of nice contemporary furniture in the sale from Central Park West, so great for the decorators. We have this wonderful table here, lacquered oak. We have this McCasker front and lacquered server, three door. From the same Central Park location, we have this Barbara Barry for Baker. Look at the fluting on this wonderful, wonderful piece. Ready to go into the house. From Roslyn, we just step back a bit where the uh, Paul Evans and the car came from. We have a set of eight of these chairs. Like, they look like they're parsing it, but they're really wonderful. Wonderful lines on them, they need reupholstery. Dorothy Draper chest there. Moving right along from Riverdale, we have lots of George Nelson for Herman Miller. We have these pair of these cabinets, we have the wall cabinets, or we have a matched pair of these. Lots of Lucite, and we've got lots of Jonathan Adler lamps in the sale. I'm just going to keep walking along, Steve, so you'll have to stay up. Here in the antique furniture, this is what they call oyster, oyster inlaid burl walnut, absolutely wonderful period William & Mary chest on stand. Mint, this came from a Darriar from a Greenwich in Connecticut estate with a lot of wonderful furniture. That's got a great patine on it. We have this wonderful inlaid secondary desk, came from the same place. We have this mid-century desk here, it's by Cohn & Co from Belgium. Okay, we have some wonderful uh, suitcases. We have these two Louis Vuitton, great for the holiday, great gifts. We have an English one here, wonderful looking. I don't know the brand of it, but it's an English one. We have some nice Chinese furniture. We got hardwood tables. We have this English Davenport. I believe there's a secret drawer that you can push or a secret button that you can push somewhere and uh, it opens up that and you're not gonna look for it. It's a wonderful patina, side drawers, all period. Over here, we have a 19th century banded. Look at the grain, and unfortunately, a slight little cigarette burn there, but nice early server, nice size. Plenty of bronze sculpture in the cell. We got these two here. Look at this wonderful mirror. This came from a Rye estate, I believe. This mirror is wonderfully carved. A French woman had it, brought it in from Paris. Beautiful size, beautiful patina. We have sconces. Sets of Regency chairs, also from the Connecticut State, nice period, chest on chest. And down here, in fact, catch these chandeliers first before we go. We've got nice bronze chandeliers, Murano. I call that a jellyfish. It reminded me of the jellyfish we used to swim through in Dublin during our holidays. But anyway, that's what it looks like. It's Murano glass, nice gilt fleck. Below that here, we have this nude looking fellow. But a wonderful quality marble sculpture. This came from Nyack, classical sculpture. Really wonderful patina, wonderfully done, and a nice big size. You see, we got it sitting on a dolly. I believe that's estimated 1,050. More double pedestal tables. And here, this beautiful, beautiful cabinet came from a woman who worked for the archdiocese up in the Bronx for Father Gigante, and this cabinet was somewhere in one of the churches. Absolutely wonderful, it was in her home and country club, it all comes together, so you got one, two, two side cabinets and the main centre cabinet. Below this, one of my favourite things to say, we have this, I believe it's a Serapi. Absolutely beautiful handmade carpet. The woman paid a fortune from this, for this. She was up in Connecticut, a big mansion up in Connecticut. It's in wonderful condition, wonderful open feel pattern. Look at the border, they call it a crab border, I believe. Really nice piece. We have these pair of beaded sconces. Over here we have our regular 19th century brownwood furniture. Here's a large mid-century Kamer chandelier. Sort of pagoda side, but much larger than the usual. 
nice shape here. We have a nice good looking uh, uh, angel or pooty. Don't want to look at the wrong way there. And there we go. Sort of as is, but a great looking chandelier. Moving right along, we have a set of eight of these ribbon chairs. These are leather, slightly as is, but very different. Also, I like this here. This is a Regency Rosewood English side lock. But what's different about this one is that it has a little leather drop down desk. So it's nice, wonderful patina, wonderful grain, side locks there. Keep your, your stash in there. We have this Irish table. A bit as is on top, but there's a nice Irish card table. Beautiful leather on it. Ready for playing the poker over the holidays. We have some nice contemporary upholstered furniture. We have this wonderful satin wood, Louis XV style marble top high chest. In the back room from a distance, Milo Bauman coffee table. We've got a beautiful William and Mary step back cabinet. We have a mid-century cabinet, mid-century tables and chairs, mirrors, lots of stuff. Don't get carried away. Come back out of there, Steve, before we lose you. Okay, moving along, we have, I believe that might be Finn's Jewel, that table. These chairs, Mies van der Rohe. Over there, a wonderful outdoor sculpture, of which we have two from Rye. I believe that's by a guy called John Roper. Nice big size, great looking. Beautiful chandelier here. This came in from a local guy in Larchmore. Look at the etched shades on this. All the bells and whistles on this chandelier. We got plume feathers, like Prince of Wales plume in popular now with the announcement of the engagement the other day. We got the bells, as we said, or just the whistles we got to find. We're getting drawing near the end. We have more carpets. We have lucite tables. We have lots of yadros, baccarat, lalik. We have jade. We have clocks. We have Chinese export. We've been so busy doing the floor and stuff, that a lot of stuff is not out yet. So do make it to the preview because it's important. There's going to be a lot of stuff out here and you'll see our wonderful new room. But before we finish, just going to focus back on this absolutely wonderful René Lalique Foy de Charme chandelier. This is lot number 220, I believe estimated eight to 12,000. Really, really wonderful. Great gifts here for you. And with that, I'm going to say happy Christmas, happy holiday. Thank you for last year. We're looking forward to seeing you. You can go to our website at www.clarkeny.com, bid live on the internet at bidsquare.com. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for our December 3rd auction preview and happy early holidays to everybody. We've got a lot to talk about, so I'm going to start right here. This is a work by the renowned artist Ludwig Bemelmans, renowned artist, illustrator, and writer, of course, known for his famed children's books, Madeline. This is from the Madeline series. It's a title page called Pepito the Weightlifter. And of course we have Pepito here boasting his muscles, his hat atop the lion's head, clothes strewn, strewn to the side, and Madeline down in front. It is pencil signed down in the lower right corner. This is out of a local Scarsdale, New York estate purchased at Hammer Galleries with a corresponding label on the back of the work. It's a casein on board. This is estimated at 10 to 15,000. Now up above, we have an uh, etching, a colored, hand-colored etching by Marc Chagall. So fantastic work. This, we believe, is from the Bible series. You can see the colors are still strong. We have nice yellows, blues, reds, and greens there. Pencil signed in the lower right margin and housed in a Heidenreich frame, estimated at 15 to 2,500. From the same estate, I'll show you a work by William Zorak. This is uh, done when Zorak was living in Paris at the young age of just 22 after emigrating to New York. He did a trip to Paris to study art. Um, this is the Palace of the Pope at Avignon. This was painted in 1909, signed down in the lower right corner with a full inscription on the back. Done in an impressionist manner, uh, but it was during this trip that he became influenced by the Cubists and Fauvists that he saw at the time. So it's an important work at a turning point of the artist's career. This is estimated at two to three thousand dollars. Now down below from a different local estate, we have an aquatint etching and it's a portrait by Pablo Picasso of the legendary Ambrose Voyard. He was the patron uh, and art dealer for many of the avant-garde French artists in the early 20th century. 
So a fantastic portrait from the Viard Suite. This is actually pencil signed in a red chalk down in the lower right corner. It's in good condition with full margins, a little bit of matte burn uh, and age staining as is to be expected. And this piece is estimated at 35 to 5,500. We have a nice collection of works from the Eugenia Kukalon Gallery collection in a New York storage. The first painting I'm going to show you is this piece. It's an abstract expressionist work by the self-taught painter Clyde Connell. She was a Louisiana-based artist. Much of her work features these totemic figures, often in her paintings and also her sculptures, for which there are many. She didn't start painting until the 1960s uh, when she became influenced by the abstract expressionists in New York after a trip. She often used red pigments, red clay pigments, and brown earth tones in her pieces, which is what we have here, the borders in red clay, also uh, acrylic paint and pencil on canvas, a very nice large size for the artist. This piece is estimated at three to 5,000. Another piece I want to show you from the mid 20th century is this work by Nick DeAngelis, a very large oil and collage on cardboard, and it's called Man and Machine. Much of his oeuvre is this robotic uh, and futurist kind of, of painting. So really interesting piece, very large scale. You can see a lot of details in this work done in four quadrants here. An interesting collection out of a Manhattan estate, estimated, estimated at 800 to 1200. We have three works by Charles Fazzino in this sale. The first one I'm going to show you right here is New York, The Wind Beneath Our Wings. This is from the deluxe edition, so it actually has three layers of dimension. It's hand embellished with rhinestones and glitter, pencil signed in the lower right margin, and numbered from an edition of 350 lower left. Nice large work well framed. Up above it from his Venice series we have Carnival of Veneziana. Again pencil sign lower right, hand embellished with glitter and rhinestones too. Nice bright vivid colors in beautiful condition. And the third one we'll talk about here is called Money Makes the World Go Round. And here we have the New York Stock Exchange on Wall Street. We've got actual coins that are affixed to the backing here. Same uh, deluxe edition as the first one I showed you with three layers of dimension, pencil signature, number down in the left, and again, fantastic uh, condition. Each one's estimated at 15 to 2,500 and 1,000 to 1,500. And just as we walk across here, we have five works from a series by Waldo Ballart. They've been separated into groups of two and three respectively. He was an abstract French painter so a nice uh, grouping of colorful panels here. And they're flanked, uh, flanking this wonderful and large Calder tapestry. This is a jute fiber tapestry. This is from the Circus series. It's after Calder, done an edition of 100, number down in the lower left. We've got a monogram and date, 1975 down here. This one is mounted uh, uh, to a backing. We do have a second Calder tapestry. That one is called Woman in spirals with the sun. So same size, this is also after Alexander Calder from an edition of 100. This one is not mounted, but I believe it has grommets along the top for hanging. Again, in beautiful condition. These are from two separate estates. They happen to walk in our gallery at this, the same time. Each one estimated at three to 5,000. Now I'd like to show you a work by Tully Filmis. And here we have a painting called Sunday in the Museum. Filmis was a New York-based artist. Uh, many of his paintings do depict museum subjects, so this is a, a really fun painting for art connoisseurs and art lovers. One of his figure and genre paintings that he's well known for. This is estimated at two to 4,000. We do have a second work by Filmis in the sale of a rabbi with a book. Much of his work does depict Jewish subjects as well. So either come into preview or look online for that one. And down below from the same collection, we have another work by a Jewish artist. This is by Nahum Gilboa. Gilboa was a Bulgarian-born uh, artist but active in Israel. And this work is a village scene, but there's just so much going on here. I think this is a really fun, fun painting. Each little corner tells a different story. You've got figures down here having tea, a woman saying goodbye to her, her soldier. We've got 
children playing jump rope, a boy with a cat out the window. So there's a lot going on here. There's so much to look at as you move across the canvas. It's signed on the back of the work with the artist's Tel Aviv address. And this piece is being offered at a $25 to $3,500 estimate. I have a few still lives I'm going to show you. The first is by Francois Bonvin. He is a French realist painter from the 19th century. And here we have a bowl of fruit in an Asian porcelain blue and white bowl. You can see the delicately rendered light, fantastic color in this work. Unfortunately, a few little nicks along the bottom. But this was a very well exhibited painting. It was exhibited in North Carolina, Washington, D.C., California. We have corresponding exhibition labels on the back of the painting. And it's being offered at a six dollars to $9,000 estimate. Now here are two other still lives from the early part of the 20th century by Mark Sterling. He was a Ukrainian board artist born to a Jewish family. We have a still life with oysters and a conch shell and a vase of flowers here in this one and up above we have a still life with fruit and flowers. These are both very much in the style of Reuben Reuben. There are two other paintings by the artist in this sale that you'll have to take a look at the catalog uh, for images or please come into our preview to check them out. These are estimated at five to seven hundred and a thousand to fifteen hundred respectively. Another work from the Kukulan collection is this very large abstract by Frederick Crowley. Crowley was a Hungarian-born painter but active in New York. He was an abstract expressionist artist. This work is called Orphism. It was done in 1960. We do have an exhibition label on the back of the painting. I love the, the monochromatic feel in this painting, the gestural abstraction here, very much in the style of Robert Motherwell. A very nice big size would look very well in a home. So happy to offer this work at a $1,000 to $1,500 estimate. And one final piece to show you is a work by Ludwig Sander, also from the Kukulon Collection in New York. It's an abstract piece by the New York-based minimalist artist, and he's known for his large planes of color, bisected by lines, simple lines, simple forms, and that's exactly what we have here signed in the upper right corner, done in greens and blues. This piece is estimated at two to 3,000. We hope you'll come in this weekend to preview the sale. Join us Sunday for the auction live in the hall, December 3rd. Thanks so much for watching. Hi, and welcome to the auction preview of Jewelry and Silver for our December 3rd auction. We'll start here with this grouping of 18 Tiffany & Company gilt or vermeil finish bread plates. Really nice though, it does come with the original receipt. It's only for, for six of them actually, but it costs nearly $4,000 for six. Um, from the same estate, a beautiful pair of silver plate wine coolers. If you look here, the beautiful folia or reed form design with the pedestal bases, really beautiful at eight to 1200. Grouping of Russian silver here, enamel decorated spoon and then yellow silver, both together at 300 to 500. From our same Manhattan estate, a large English silver plate, trumpet vase, monumental size, beautiful floral decoration. It is marked, I, didn't, I wasn't able to figure out who it was by, but it's a really nice piece, estimated at 300 to 500. Pair of Russian silver candlesticks, nice design, fully marked, late 19th century. And here we have a grouping of silver, kind of ornate silver, beautiful Gorham peacocks. These are wonderful, continental silver. Neff ship finials, beautiful ornate open work design to the handles, nice open work heart form bowl. This is a Tiffany mug, kind of Japanese style. And then this continental silver pedestal bowl. Interesting lot, a more contemporary piece. This is by Patrick Mavros. He is a Zimbabwean silver artist. Uh, so this is all in silver, aside from the harp, etc. cetera. Um, the original little pamphlet that comes with the piece. It's fully stamped circa 2001, and it's approximately 176 troy ounces of silver. So it's a heavy piece, really beautiful with the nice monkeys. I love them on the branch. Um, estimated at 3,000 to 5,000. And here is one of many flatware services in this auction. We have about five of them, all different patterns, different makers. This is uh, Sir Christopher. So really heavy grouping. It's approximately 180 troy ounces of silver. So it's a big service, lots of pieces, lots of serving pieces, and 
will be offered on December 3rd. And now we'll move on to a huge collection of great jewelry um, from a, a, an assortment of estates. We'll start here from a Hastings estate, beautiful double band tennis bracelet, old mine cut diamonds, really nice heavy diamond weight, nearly 10 carats, estimated at four to 6,000. Etruscan Revival, gold, turquoise, and diamonds, the earrings and a little brooch, but I'm sure it could be converted to a pendant. Really nice set, 400 to 600. Two bracelets, we have diamonds, open work, peridot and diamonds, both together. Beautiful, beautiful antique French, 18 karat gold rubies and diamonds. So you can see kind of the Greek key design here, and then really fantastic, it opens up to reveal a locket. Shield form here, and it's either a pendant or a brooch, which is a nice option. Judith Ripka, a nice designer piece, heavy gold, toggle clasp with diamond accents and ruby cabochons. And moving on to some more antique pieces, two enamel decorated, one with diamonds, one with seed pearls and diamond accents, both together at 500 to 700. I meant to bring a lighter with me, but I don't have one. Um, but this is synthetic alexandrite, or one of the phenomenal stones. It changes color. So it's either this nice purpley tail, or it's a deep, deep ruby red. Um, nice piece, interesting, nice filigree setting to the stones. Diamonds, antique diamonds, beautiful. Silver topped gold, typical of the time. Heavy diamond weight, nice dangle here. Really pretty from the same Hastings estate. More contemporary, but carved jade, diamonds and onyx. One diamond is replaced, but really, really beautiful. These would look great on. Another antique piece, Etruscan Revival. Nice locket here with the different colored golds. Locket on the back. Contemporary, two 18 karat gold bands, stacking rings with diamond accents, four to 600. Retro or vintage double chain, 14 karat yellow gold. Another antique style with diamonds and emeralds. Really nice, again with a locket on the back. And we'll move on to this piece. Beautiful, beautiful graduated baguette diamond. But you can see that the diamonds actually go all the way around the band, which is a really nice feature. Quality piece, beautiful. So we have some 14 and 18 karat gold rings with rubies. We have 14 karat gold and then some stacking rings. So each ring has a, a little ruby chip nice stacking pieces. Hammerman Brothers gold chain, heavy diamond weight, and really nice open work design. This piece comes from one of our estates. Um, comes in a nice antique Tiffany box, although it's not marked. Has a center diamond of about one and a half carats with each of these arms containing graduated diamond band. This is actually going into GIA today, so it will be certified prior to the sale. More antique gold, beautiful enamel work, enamel with seed pearl inlay, really nice gold, heavy. And here's one of our diamond rings in the sale. Beautiful piece, approximately 1.69 carats, K color and VS1 clarity. It is fully certified, so it does come with this and all the information is available on our website. Contemporary Italian artist, rose cut diamonds. The artist's name is Anaconda, or that's the name of the company, set in 18 karat white gold. Really nice, estimated at 1,000 to 1,500. Victorian jewelry, enamel with the seed pearls and diamonds, a brooch or pendant with matching earrings, estimated at 400 to 600. And here, oh, I love this piece. So this is a jab brooch. So when they wore the big ruffly collars, this would sit inside of there. Um, so it is a sword form with, with really a nice amount of diamond weight here and sapphire accents. And it all comes apart, really nice quality, beautiful piece. One of our cocktail rings, peridot and diamonds, kind of a floral shape, really quite nice, out of a Hastings estate. Um, this is an, another diamond pendant, nice diamond weight, antique, silver over gold again. Another signed piece is this David Yerman double chain with the nice big clasp, typical of his work, estimated at 400 to 600. Beautiful diamond and sapphire ring, nice out of Hastings. Art Nouveau, enamel work, seed pearls, diamonds, but really a nice, if you, you have to pick it up to see it, but there's a nice dangle diamond here. Nice size, and I'm just gonna backtrack for a minute because I forgot this grouping of watches. 
men's watches with one lady's watch, 18 karat gold English. This actually has a Rolex movement. So it's kind of interesting. You can look on the website for all the details on this. Nice watch fobs with large citrine um, pendants. Another enamel face. This is great deco. And moving back into the ladies jewelry, we have this nice gold jarretier or buckle form bracelet with enamel decoration and seed pearls. Or actually, these are just pearls, seed pearls on the, the end there. Um, Tahitian pearl, diamond and gold, 18 karat gold earrings. The pearl does come off, so they can just be small hoops or with the dangle here. Floral brooch, heavy diamond weight with colored gems and emeralds. We have a whole collection of antique or Georgian jewelry. This is just one of the lots of rings we're offering, but really nice. Typical of the time period. I love this one, the little navette with the seed pearls. So if you like Georgian jewelry, check our site because there's a tremendous amount of them. Um, beautiful lapis and diamond ring, heavy 18 karat gold, 18 karat yellow gold millibeaded bracelet. Really simple, but looks great. Tiffany grouping, we have a locket, we have an 18 karat gold and sterling money clip, another a tie bar and a great perfume bottle on chain, or bracelet, I'm sorry. Brooch grouping, not all gold, but great antique jewelry, some vintage, Etruscan, turquoise, turquoise and diamonds, enamel, all information on this is available online. A great Art Nouveau brooch. This is really beautiful. We have the, the beautiful pearls here, and I do believe that these may be demon toyed garnets, but I'm not saying for sure. That is my feeling though, with a graduated band to the, the part of the leaf there. Another diamond and sapphire brooch. Really nice, great floral design to this piece. Heavy, heavy, heavy 14 karat gold bracelet with a Florentine finish. Here we have a men's ring. Heavy diamond weight, about two carats, set in 14 karat white gold. Charm bracelet, 14 karat. This is a great little organic form charm. If we have any Rutgers alumni, here's a piece for you. A great little hand mirror, missing the glass, and a whistle. 14 karat gold mesh bag, really nice condition. A few pulls to the edges here, but really great shape. Sapphire cabochon closures, and it is stamped on the inside with a maker's mark, but it's kind of scratched and I wasn't able to make out who it was, also with a serial number. And one of our, our most popular pieces in the sale thus far is this Rolex, really beautiful blue and red Pepsi bezel. The serial number is 1861943, circa 1968. By consigner provenance, this only had one owner, and the estimate is three to 5,000. Here we have a beautiful 18 karat white gold onyx and diamond lorgnette. This opens up to reveal glasses. Really nice on this open work sterling chain. Um, really beautiful. I love this set. It's an amethyst suite. So we have the necklace with these great pear shut pear-shaped drops and diamond accents, bracelet, and two different earrings. So maybe more casual and fancier, I don't know, but it's estimated at three to 5,000. Um, this is a whole grouping, well, they're actually individually lauded, but I wanted everyone to see the length. So these are satois or, or longer necklaces. We have turquoise, assortment of colored gems in various shapes and sizes. And this was originally just a, a longer chain and someone put a, a ring clasp on here. So these are citrines, there's eight pendants, each are individually lauded and there's additional images online. We have a turquoise suite. So this bracelet, it actually has two clasps so it can be shortened if it's a bit too big, but beautiful, there is one pearl missing and it comes with these earrings. Um, this is a Marcus and Company pendant on a, just a gold filled chain, really typical of his style. Uh, one cabochon does have a little bit of damage to it, but beautiful Art Nouveau piece. Uh, Tiffany and Company, 18 karat gold necklace and bracelet. If you just want to look at the clasp here, it's really quite nice. Beautiful craftsmanship, estimated at three to 5,000. Here we have an 18 karat gold charm bracelet with a variety of heart, carved heart charms. Two additional pieces in this bag. Some do have a bit of condition issues, but it's really nice. Um, Assortment, I actually made this grouping of all things that I like. Uh, jade, here there's some Moonstone, a great little filigree snuff bottle. It's gilt silver, but really beautiful. Jade necklace, jade earrings, onyx and pearls, tragedy and comedy necklaces, and two great chains. Um, this is by itself at four to 600, coral and 14 karat gold. 
large diamond and pearl stick pin, or I mean bar pin, I'm sorry, um, estimated at 400 to 600, I believe. Approximately 68 karat topaz, set in 14 karat white gold, beautiful setting, really large in size and in good, size and in good condition. This is a um, 1884 Marchioness of Lansdowne coin set in 14 karat gold bale, estimated at 1500 to 2000. George Jensen ink watch, sterling silver, beautiful, nice workmanship to the band here, estimated at 300 to 500. More amethyst jewelry, actually from a different estate, but still really nice. Here's a pendant that was converted, or a brooch that was converted into a pendant, and a nice cabriolet drop with diamond accents. A butterfly brooch, heavy diamond weight, nice size stone here with emeralds, rubies, and sapphires. Mid 19th century Russian gold, beautiful, beautiful cabochons, and there's actually little di diamond chips in these pendants. Estimated at 8 to 1200, it is fully marked on the clasp. So it's marked back here. All the photographs are available online though. Uh, triple strand coral necklace with a 14 karat gold clasp, four to 600. Grouping of carved items. So we have some cameos, carnelian, and then a beautiful coral. I'm partial to coral, but she's really quite nice. One of my favorite lots in the sale is this 18 karat Italian gold brooch or pendant, uh, carved scarab in the center with this beautiful urn with, with large handles. It's actually papal gold, so it's signed with all the Italian marks on the back. And there's actually car, the carved carnelian of a soldier here. Ram's heads, really beautiful. Aquamarine and diamond bar pin. And I'm gonna move on to the Bucciolati here. This actually comes in the original case, which is pretty fantastic. 18 karat gold Mario Bucciolati diamonds. Great detailing to the lace edges here, in good condition, just needs a nice cleaning, fully stamped on the back. These actually, they come from the same estate. Unfortunately, someone took, replaced the backings. So if they were marked, I believe that they, I, I believe they're Bucciolati, but the backings have been removed, so it's not, it's unsigned. So they're just attributed to, estimated at four to 600. Miele diamond pendant was converted from a brooch or some sort of a locket but on this nice chain, really a nice, good condition and, an, and a, a looker. Tiffany & Company 18 karat gold open face pocket watch is in running condition, but all watches are sold as is. Um, there are photographs of the movement online. Los Castillos sterling necklace, beautiful diamond 14 karat gold bracelet. I love this ring. This is diamond past, what is it, past, future, present? Ring, three diamonds, beautiful, a lot of diamond weight. Aquamarine and diamonds set in 18 karat gold. 14 karat gold rope chain with a little brooch of a geisha with diamond accents and a pearl. We have some pearl necklaces. Double strand with center opal and surround of diamonds. A nice old strand with, with an antique clasp. Another antique clasp, Edwardian diamonds and, and sapphires. Silver grouping and some gold, 18 karat. I love these articulated fish on a sterling and enamel chain, cloisonne, diamonds and pearls, coral pearls. 14 karat gold, great fringe chain to this with a little pendant of a beauty. And I'm going to wrap it up with one of my favorite lots in the sale. Tiffany brooch, beautiful leaf form antique, nice old Tiffany with the bow form here. And then these, these little diamonds are in tremblant, so they move, which is great. It's all stamped on the back beautiful piece and that wraps it up for my section of jewelry and silver and we hope to see you on December 3rd.